And Dr. Oren, for months you have predicted on this show that the release of the Trump peace plan would lead to a breakthrough. And since I last spoke to you, you're not the prophet nor the son of the prophet, but boy, did you see this coming. The United Arab Emirates and Israel strike a peace deal. I just need your reaction to how significant this deal is. It's a total game changer. It overthrows 30, 50, in some cases, 70 years of assumptions about how you make peace that Israel had to give up territory to buy peace, that the Palestinian-Israel uh, conflict was the core conflict of the whole Middle East. You solved that. You solved all the problems. But the core of that problem was the settlement, um, that the Palestinians have to be rewarded every time they lose the, the, the table. Everything, that entire peace industry, and it's vast. You know, it's Washington. It's all the think tanks. It's the media. It's universities. It all gets overthrown in one fell swoop. And it opens up myriad possibilities. Um, the wedding of Israeli technology with Arab resources. Israel's the, most, the world's most innovative country with the world's wealthiest country per capita. And that's transformative for the entire world. And it the is. great irony of it is the Palestinians are going to internalize. The time's not on their side. The chances of them coming back to the table are far greater now than ever before. I'd add as well, yesterday Sudan announced that they are getting close to dealing with Israel I read the Saudi Arabian foreign minister's remarks as blessing the UAE deal. What else do you think is happening in the aftermath of the United Arab Emirates and Israel striking an accord? Well, um, you know, on the diplomatic plane, it's, it's Bahrain, it's Oman. I think the Saudis are going to see whether this is going to, you know, redound to everyone's benefit. They're not going to sit inside if everyone's doing great deals uh, in, in the Middle East. Not going to sit on the side, particularly in areas like like communications and, and energy. We're, we're great in energy. So, you know, they, they'll join as well, too. Um, and, you know, even the, <laughs> the president of Lebanon, uh, who's closely allied with Hezbollah, started hinting around that maybe Lebanon would be open to it, too. Imagine what we could do with Lebanon. It'd be amazing. Uh, just in the area of, of rebuilding Beirut and, and tourism. Um, so th that's amazing. Um, all of that is going to be happening. It's interesting. Uh, he, I, I know of middle-sized businesses in Israel that have received communications from their counterpart in the Gulf already saying, oh, isn't this great? Let's get, let's do business together. You know, uh, Ambassador Oren, your, your follow-on successor, Ron Dermer, dealt with Ambassador Otaibi, who I know you must have done. But this is so complicated at so many levels. Your Mossad head was over in the UAE. Netanyahu and uh, MBZ were dealing together with Trump and Jared Kushner and uh, Robert O'Brien, deeply involved Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, Brian Hook. How did this stay secret, or did it stay secret? It, well, <laughs> our relationship with the OE has always been sort of an open secret. I had very good relationships with Ambassador uh, Taiba as well, terrific man. Um, but it, it, listen, they kept the peace process secret. Nobody knew the details of this peace, peace plan until it was unveiled at the White House. So uh, whatever criticism you may have of this administration, they not, in the Middle East, they know how to keep a secret. Now, now the, the last thing before we run out of time, I, I, it was so ignored by the American news media caught up in this bizarre post office conspiracy. Do you think Americans understand how significant this is? Well, I hope they do, because the quickest way to, to reverse what has been achieved would be to go back and renew the Iran nuclear deal, because clearly this happened because of, of, of common opposition to America's support for that deal. Uh, the quickest thing you could do is to give the Palestinians more reason to leave the table and not negotiate. So, you know, I, again, I'm not the prophet. I don't know who's going to win in November, but I think if someone comes into the White House and reverses all this, it's going to be uh, very damaging for the peoples of the Middle East. Any good signs at all out of the Palestinian Authority? I expect nothing from Abbas, but was there any good uh, signal that, OK, let's sit down and do this deal? Well, first of all, you know, like everyone was – again, once again, we heard that if, if you make peace with Israel, Arab makes peace with Israel, you recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital, the Palestinians are going to go into a third intifada. They're going to riot. They're going to burn everything. Guess what? Nothing happened. Again, nothing happened. So that's good. Not, not a reaction is also a good reaction. And uh, I, again, I will not be surprised. If in the coming weeks you're going to start hearing from the Palestinians a readiness to go back to the table, and one of the things that Mahmoud Abbas is most afraid of is a guy named Dahlan. He's a Palestinian uh, leader who is backed by the Emirates, and he's 30 years younger and ready to move in. 
So, and he's in favor of negotiating. So, you know, I think there's going to be tremendous pressure on Abbas now to say, right, now, to start now, very quickly. Yes. Uh, yeah. Times of Israel says you're going to go to elections uh, because you can't do a budget deal. True or false? You know, every week I say, you, get, you ask me that question, I always say, no, we're not going to go, we're not going to go. My fear now is we're going to fall into elections and nobody even wants them. And it's going to be like August 1914. And uh, it's a fear. It'll be terrible if that happens. Um, this government was formed to fight corona. It has not done a very good job of fighting corona. And uh, if it goes to elections, it'll basically be defeat, and many people will pay a political price. Would Likud emerge at the end of it with a majority? Yeah, because it's a right-wing coalition, and they still have a significant majority. But, uh, but I think that Bennett, that Bennett, which runs the right-wing party, most right-wing party, which is very much opposed to the, to the, to the peace plan and also the non-annexation of the West Bank, will gain immensely in, the notion, in these elections. Interesting. Dr. Michael Oren.